Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again, folks, to Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And guess what? Joining me again, you choose education forum. Boy, they always have the they all have outstanding guests that I'm able to get as far as resources are concerned. We've got an excellent show today. Again, thanks again to you, Choose, our education forum. Uh, we're going to talk about a subject matter that concerns all of us throughout the state of Oregon. We're talking about our kids. We're talking about kids, the education of our kids. As you know, in all due respect, we don't have a, a pretty picture here in the state of Oregon as it relates to uh, our, let's see, those formative years, you know, uh, let's see, K-1 to K-12 during those years, we're all concerned. And naturally here in the, in the, in the quote, in the metropolitan area, that's a major area. Our largest school district, for instance, is a good example of that. Many of our kids are failing. And naturally many of these kids, whether you recognize it or not, uh, when you think about our criminal justice system, many of them graduate in our criminal justice system. And we are concerned about that. But besides just the, here in the, in the Portland metropolitan area, outside of Portland, uh, there are issues also Basically, the same relevancy, maybe at a smaller number, but the fact is there are major, major issues. And that's what we're going to be dis discussing today. And just maybe just citing some of the, some of the little concerns here locally uh, in, in, uh, in the Portland metropolitan area. For instance, uh, uh, there's no voc ed. There's no voc ed in the Portland public school system. Many parents are concerned about that. If you're elderly or like myself or whatever, we, we experienced that, that opportunity. And it helped us, if you will, in schools. I mean, our parents maybe not have been doctors or this, that, and the other, but I.e., we, we, we liked it to paint, we used to use our hands and things of that nature, so voc ed was an area aspect of it. And so as a result of that, uh, we've got uh, other opportunities, uh, creative ways, if you will, of trying to, parents were concerned about trying to get uh, their kids to, to, to that particular point, i.e., whether it be homeschool, uh, whether it be uh, uh, scholarships, uh, uh, whether it be charter schools, and as you note, in, here in the Portland metropolitan area, for that, that matter, we've got one of the, the best schools running, running, if you will. It's called SEI, SEI, headed by uh, Tony Hobson, and they've got about a 98% graduation rate, if you will, I and mean, that's outstanding. These are all African-American kids. I mean, a lot of times we've been told these kids are all failures. They're not. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, they should be superintendent of public schools, you know what I mean? But you can't talk about that sometimes. Uh, and then there's, there's the other issues about um, the concerns about parents, about uh, whether or not the kids are going to be educated. Some of the, I've talked to parents, uh, Bill Diaz, you remember I was talking about Bill Diaz the other day. He was a guy that was uh, one of the teachers at, at Benson High School that was fired. He was fired. He was fired, uh, relieved of his job because of, the, because of his, uh, his feelings, if you will, about um, Planned Parenthood and the whole issue of abortion. And he was fired. But some of the parents were saying to me, well, gee, Bruce, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, maybe I am conservative. And, and I, I just don't like the idea of them, uh, i.e., promoting that kind of a situation within, within our class system. And what he, the bottom line is that he was fired. And uh, some of them were saying, Bruce, we can't talk about that. But then there were some other concerns about our Portland Public School. The fact of the matter is we happen to have a, a gay superintendent. And, um, and some of the folks were concerned about that. And uh, sure, it's an issue. So we should talk about these issues. The fact of the matter is, the bottom line is that we've got to make sure our kids are given the best education that uh, this country has to give. And here in Oregon, we want to have the best education if it is. So what I'm doing today, I gave you this little preempt, but the bottom line is that I brought some folks outside of the Portland metropolitan area who have similar concerns. And we're going to talk about um, uh, these various issues with them. And joining me in the, in the, in the, in the, in the discussion will be Debbie Lawrence and Don Crawford. Welcome, folks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. I was looking at your background, then you guys can expand on this piece aspect of it. But uh, Don, I noticed you were Don, a PhD, teaches graduates courses in education at Portland State University and has worked in the port public school system for 35 years. And then Debbie, on the other hand, is a teacher and the founder of the MITCH, we're going to get that down, Mitch Charter School, and one of the founding directors of the League of Oregon Charter Schools. Okay. Why don't we start off with you, Debbie? Anything I can add to that? Maybe break that down, MITCH? Talk a little bit about that for a minute. So um, I was a, a public school and private school teacher. And then e when my kids were little, so it was like in the early 90s, it was obvious that the school systems were failing kids even back then. And so my girlfriend and myself 
um, started looking into opening a private school, and she was diagnosed with cancer in 1998. So I, we pretty much had a what I felt like was a good business plan by the time she passed away. So charter schools became legal. Kids Hopper signed the bill in 1999 of um, May. So I took that business plan and moved it forward to eventually get a sponsor from Tiger Twalton School District. And so we opened Mitch, which is named after her. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, in oh. 2002. Oh, yeah. great, great, great. Don, how about yourself? You want to on that background a little bit? Well, I, I've been working in schools, and then I got my doctorate at the University of Oregon in uh, teaching methods and education. And I've trained teachers and uh, both in uh, universities and then also in the private sector. And after a while, after a few years of doing that, I decided to uh, put my money where my mouth is and, and run, run charter schools. And I uh, did that in Columbus, Ohio. I worked with charter schools also in Baltimore. Hmm. Uh, and um, then finally uh, here in uh, Portland, uh, running the uh, Arthur Academies. And um, I've just found that we can uh, put the best methods and the best training and the best ways of doing things uh, together and we can make a big difference uh, and in the in the large public schools uh, everything is so bureaucratic and there's so many rules and there's so many regulations and so many things you can't do uh, that you you can't make it better okay well look why don't we start off with a few questions or whatever i got some questions here i'm just going to just go around and we're going to have a discussion with, among us okay what are the differences in traditional public schools and charter schools and maybe you can even talk a little bit about the history of that from the standpoint of when did it was when it was initiated and mm -hmm. why yeah. well so it, sometimes it's easier to talk about what's similar because okay. there's a lot of differences similar is that we share state school funding dollars so we get 80 percent of the state school funding dollars um so that's similar similar is it is public school so and it's a 501c3 so you have a board that oversees the school um, similar is that you can't choose who comes to your school to open access to anybody through lottery. Um, similar is all state testing has to be done. Most charter schools have um, all of their teachers are certified or highly qualified. Mm -hmm. The law gives some flexibility, but most charter schools go to the higher bar because their districts have asked them to do that. Um, and differences are going to be that when you go into a charter school, it's going to feel like a private school traditionally because uh, there's no money for buildings. So your facility is going to be very unique. Usually there are churches, there are uh, warehouses, there are shopping centers. I mean, so every building is going to look a little bit different. There are charter schools that rent their facilities from their school district, though. So there is that that goes on. Or they share a facility with their school district. So charter schools are just really unique when it comes to um, a facility. They're different because they were mandated to come up with the curriculum. So most charter schools have had to prove that what they're going to teach is going to be the best option for the kids and a different option than what's going on in a traditional public school setting. Um, so that's different because mm -hmm. a lot of times in a traditional public school in the fourth grade, four, um, four teachers teaching fourth grade could all be teaching completely different subjects. Mm -hmm. And nobody's really monitoring that. They're just doing the best they can with what was given to them. In a, pu in a public charter school, that curriculum is usually very um, diagnostic, very sequential, very proven. It's not random, you know, um, because we had to do that. We had to show that we were doing that. And then we, are, we don't get bond money, uh, a lot of the federal money, transportation money, free and reduced money. It's just pretty much uh, mm -hmm. clean state school funding 80%. 80%. Well, 80% is a it. little misleading in that that's 80% of the state school funding. Yeah. Which means you operate basically in charter schools operate less than 50% of what are in yeah, the, the traditional yes. district schools. So uh, typically less than $5,000 per pupil yeah. Yeah. per year. Yeah. Uh, and and we estimates in the district schools are anywhere from 10, 11, 13,000. Yes. So uh, considerably less. And um, mm -hmm. and buy your own buildings out of that. Yeah. You, know, you said thirteen or fourteen thousand per per student per student per, per yeah, child. Right. Yeah, in a and then district. charters get what four or five thousand. You said yeah, yeah, yeah. You, less than five. Yeah, less we say forty percent of total funding is usually what a charter school operates on. Mm -hmm. 
because it's state school funding is just one line item, right? There's mm -hmm. several line items. And so we're going to get 80% of the one line item mm -hmm. in districts have but, but again, more sources. But they're still signed off by public schools. I mean, it's still yeah. a public school. It's, a public, still a, public school. School. it's still yes. a public school. It's still a public school. All the Absolutely. kids can come for free. It doesn't cost anything. Right. It's, it's the same access as the district school down the street, except it just has a lot less money and it's run sensibly with, with a central idea yeah. to say, here's how we can run this school mm -hmm. in a way that works. And, um, and they do work mm -hmm. uh, they, because they're, they're thought out yeah. and they're free from all those bureaucratic rules and regulations that hamstring people mm -hmm. in the district schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you cite examples, some samplings, if you will, of some charter schools in terms of, you know, when you say charter school, right, and then and, and the curriculum here, in essence, public schools don't have that particular right. curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, and the Arthur Academy yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. is one. Yeah, we yeah. used uh, direct instruction, mm -hmm. which is a specific set of curriculum okay. uh, that is uh, used here and there around the country. And uh, that's very effective. And it's n not particularly popular, but it, it's very effective. It teaches all kids to read in kindergarten and up. And uh, when that's used, uh, I worked with the school, charter schools in Baltimore, uh, for instance, in the inner city, where all those kids were learning to read in those schools. Um, yeah. Mitch had a whole different set of curriculum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And There's, you yeah. mentioned mm -hmm. SEI. Yeah, right, right. Um, SEI, right. And they have their own mm -hmm. curriculum and mm -hmm. their way of structuring things. Mm -hmm. And But because they put it together in a way that makes sense, because it's small, they know the kids, they know the parents, people are there by choice, it works. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it works better. It's safer, uh, people get along better. Uh, the the kids are you know more engaged the parents are more engaged the mm -hmm. teachers are more engaged and um, it just works better and that, that freedom mm -hmm. to to design things in a way that works and change things if you have to mm -hmm. to make it work better all that freedom in those schools is what makes them work but I will say too to to mm -hmm. add to that Charter schools struggle a lot, too, because many of the people who will come to a charter school, it's because the traditional system didn't work. And, and it's not necessarily mm -hmm. anybody's fault. It's just that it's not working. And so when they come to a charter school, sometimes they think the magic wand is going to be wove, you know. <laughs> like or the online, I think the online schools are seeing a lot of this online charter schools are. So the, the kids, you know, get expelled or they drop out of the traditional school so now they're going to go to school online mm -hmm. and that is a whole different type of learning um and that's not that's not easy, not easy. No, it's, it's not easy. i don't think it's easy it wasn't easy for me when i did it for mm -hmm. college but mm -hmm. i will say that um w we don't get the perfect situation mm -hmm. most of the times most of the times you're getting a situation where they are looking for safety they are uh, looking for higher academics i mean the the parents that are choosing charter schools are very specific because who would leave a perfectly good school? Mm -hmm. Nobody would. Mm -hmm. So they're coming to you because you're going to fix it or you're mm -hmm. going to make it better for their family. And in most of the times, like Don said, it's true. It will happen. But it takes time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're changing yeah. habits. Mm -hmm. You know, you're teaching study skills and homework and parent participation and hmm. you know well, so, and when the yeah. kids come they're often well behind uh, the other Two students years. that have been there Two yeah a couple of years. Yeah. behind and so you've got to catch them up and and that's yeah. hard work people put down charter schools and say we just cream the best students and that's no. absolutely the opposite of what happened yep. we get the students who are unhappy and failing and in trouble and not succeeding and the parents are, are finally choose something different and and right. we make it work uh, but why people don't want to expand that I, I don't understand you know let let there be more of it you know but you know going back to that same point the fact of the matter is the, the, the public schools actually sign off if you will on your curriculum when you are approved right yes yes okay yes. they, they mm -hmm. specifically yes. know yes. that you're audited no that whole yeah. nine years oh, yes. oh, yeah. yeah. let's go back to the other point you made about the 80 percent aspect of it mm -hmm. you talked about that 12,000 now that's I'm sure that's very interesting 12,000 per child right yeah and you're only getting 80 percent so what happened to the other 20 percent is that the administration? Uh, yeah, it's well, the shared fee that, that goes it's, to the, admin, the, yeah. uh, the sponsoring. What it is district, is that yeah. it's legislation. And when it's something it. passes the legislature, it doesn't have to make sense. It just has yeah. to pass. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, of course, when we first asked for that, I'm sure we asked for, you know, fair share, 100%. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then some groups said, no, we don't want any charter schools. And so they settled on, well, we'll give you part of the money. Mm -hmm. um, 
basically so little that it's not possible to pay teachers in charter schools as much as they make in the in the district schools because sure. we we have uh, really less than half of the money mm -hmm. to work with but we we make it work um, and we should have more opportunities to expand mm -hmm. But and a big controversy that goes with that is that we're not able to choose their retirement. We're required to do PERS, and PERS right now is twenty eight cents on the dollar. So for a charter school who's getting forty percent of the funding that a regular school is, and then they're requiring us to do to choose their retirement system, um, it, it doesn't make sense because charter schools are about choice, and teachers are already taking less pay. And um, when you interview a lot of the teachers that will come to a charter school, it's because they want the freedom to teach. And they, they are making less money when they choose to come to our school. Mm -hmm. And so it only makes sense that they would be able to choose their own retirement package. And the charter school then would be held you know, mm -hmm. accountable for giving them one. But the PERS is just it doesn't. Getting, it doesn't it's work. Yeah. It's wrong. To and make it's people payback have that. for people that yeah. had nothing to do with the charter that's school. That's right. You know, it's going to people that aren't part yeah. of our system at all. So I know, know that's a big controversial item for mm -hmm. charter schools. Any ideas of how many charters we're carrying here in the state of Oregon? Yeah, we have 124. 124 throughout the state of Oregon. Yeah, a, a little over 23,000 children are enrolled in charter schools. Wow, that's, that's yeah. heavy. Okay, let me ask another one. There are some other areas that mm -hmm. they have options. Uh, why do you think we need more school choice? like more public charter schools or vouchers or more scholarships to private schools, meaning other areas, mm -hmm. right? right? Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, you know, we're failing kids. We're not, what is it, how many kids drop out in Portland Public? Somewhere like 78, I think, was the last number I heard, that only 78% graduate and the rest drop out. I mean, they, they, they walk away from a free education. Why is that? Because it's so terrible. It is, it's right. not working. It doesn't make any sense. A lot right. of them come to high school. They don't have the skills to succeed in high school. Mm -hmm. They don't have any voc ed. They don't have things that they see are meaningful. And, and the system j is getting more and more rigid year after year. I've been in education a long time. Mm -hmm. And w when I started in education, a teacher was allowed to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they were allowed to uh, sometimes choose your own books, make your own lessons, do things the way you wanted to, make your own tests, and you figure out what to do. That's not true anymore. It's, everything is prescriptive, and, mm -hmm. and you're, not, you're not allowed to discipline, you're not allowed to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we can't retain kids, we can't refer kids, we can't, there's tons of things, that, and the system is just right. rigid, and it doesn't work for teachers, it doesn't work for kids. And it, we just need people to be able to go out and, and do things differently, and, and parents want that. Every charter school in the state has a long waiting list. Mm -hmm. And that alone right there should tell you something mm -hmm. is wrong. They're, they're, they, they get turned away. They, they want to take their kid to a charter school. There's not enough room mm -hmm. and there's not enough charter schools. And, and, you know, Arthur Academy's had 100 kids for maybe 10 slots. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, people signed up and hoping right. they could get yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, but that's not that's not right. Mm -hmm. it, right. People, parents know they want something different, right. uh, but they're not getting any choices because the system is all rigid and set, and right. teachers aren't happy. You know, they're about ready to strike. You know. Well, and to open a charter school, it's a ridiculous system, and it's and it's gotten worse. It's gotten harder and harder to open a charter school now in the state of Oregon, where across the United States, charter schools are becoming more accepted, and the um, from top down, it becomes a more friendly environment versus competition. It's all about looking for the child and their need and getting kids to graduate and preparing them for choices when they're done, right? Well, so why would, doesn't make any sense in Oregon to restrict that. So like Don said, all the charter schools have a huge wait list. Mm -hmm. And SEI, to talk about them for a minute, middle school in the state of Oregon is like a holding tank. It's like they pray to God the kids aren't pregnant and drug users when they're yeah. out of public school. Right. Well, SEI is a middle school, mm -hmm. and they're a middle school, like you said, with high integrity, and they're graduating kids out of there at a high rate. I mean, kids want to learn. They want to go to school. But if they go to school and they don't learn anything and the bar is so low, it's stupid. Mm -hmm. Why go to school? And I think the other thing, too, that we've lost, you know, since mm -hmm. we've both been in education like 30 years, is that we do goofy things now with kids. We do things like... 
we praise them for goofy things. Yeah. We, we, we notice them for their behavior that should be expected. It's expected to come to school and to be ready for school. But instead, we got to go, oh, Johnny, thank you so much for being ready for school. Mm -hmm. Well, our expectations so low. No, they mm -hmm. automatically should be ready for school. So we, the way we've just dropped the bar and everything in the state of Oregon is just a crime. I mean, it's... It's not setting our kids up for success at all. It's making excuses for what used to be the norm. And I think we're failing in that area too. But there's no doubt there should be more charter schools, more private schools, more public schools, just more overall options for parents. Um, but there's a power to be out there that is very, very strong that I I clearly don't think uh, wants that to happen because competition mm. they would see as bad mm. instead of embracing it. Mm -hmm. You know, Burger King's a good hamburger because you have Wendy's and McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all have a good hamburger. Yeah. You all got yeah. choices. Yeah. It's all about the same dollar. Mm. So it, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It's non American to have public, limited public school choices. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, as you're talking mm -hmm. about this issue, I, I'm thinking about when we made this drastic change if you will, from the state level, mm -hmm. where we did, all of a sudden the governor took over, if you will, public schools. Yeah. Uh, he, now he is the super superintendent mm -hmm. yeah. of schools uh, because of the concerns that you were just citing. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's kind of like saying the buck stops here, right? Now, mm -hmm. now we're talking about the legends. Now he's the head guy. Right. He can call the special session aspect. Of it. Look like this should be a special session. Right. Let's talk about the legislature. Do, aren't these people familiar with the the issues that you're just addressing? Talk uh, to me. I don't. Th I don't think they are particularly. Although, or they are, and they're just not interested in what happens to kids and parents. You know, the the Senate just passed uh, 1538. The House turned it down, uh, which would have restricted charters to three percent. Um, in in Who no led more. That charge? Who led that charge? Any any idea? Well, uh, what, what? well, Portland Public asked for the law. Portland mm -hmm. Public. Portland yeah, Public law. put that in. Said we don't want mm -hmm. more than three percent. I can see why. Schools. Why? Why? You know what? Yeah. They have school. They have little tiny schools that they can't. They can't run a little school. They don't know how to do that. They have little buildings that they are letting go fallow. They won't let charter schools come in. They want to turn down charter schools. They don't want to consider applications. They don't want. They don't want to have this choice. And why? I don't know. You know, if I was a superintendent, you know what I'd do? I'd make all the schools charter schools, and I wouldn't have to work hard. They, they'd just take care of themselves. Well, you they'd know? Run and and I'd have a lot of money left. And cost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like subcontractors. Yeah, right, right, you know, if you're right. a general contractor and you don't like plumbing, you hire a subcontractor mm -hmm. to do the plumbing. And you make some profit on him, yeah. and you, you let him worry all the That's all that charter schools are subcontractors mm -hmm. for school yeah. districts. Mm -hmm. And do they, the do a better, they do a better job. They give more mm -hmm. choice to parents. They give more choices to kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and why anybody is against it, I don't know. Someday, people are going to look back mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. There were people that were against charter schools. Why right. would they do that? Right. The, you know, why, why would they be against freedom? Debbie, what, what do you think about the, the legislature? Have you gotten any feedback from, from that arena in terms of the concerns that you've had? Um, uh, given any? Yeah, as a matter of fact, from the League of Oregon Charter Schools, we, d we don't really have anybody who's a lobbyist for us. We you don't, don't have one. No, and many of the states are, have a bigger and a stronger thing, but we just haven't... Um, we haven't really organized ourselves to have charter schools pay enough money into some sort of membership to where we can afford a lobbyist. We did at one time um, have somebody who was helping us a lot, and then he's, he's not able to do that anymore. But um, so what happened was is I got an email that said 1538 is up. It's, we, you know, we hear it's going to pass through the Senate. And so I read it, and, of course, I like, was like, oh, my gosh, this is horrid. And so what happens because we're not, we don't have that kind of organization and, and money coming from charter schools to support somebody at the lobbyist is we have a very, very strong teachers union and we have a very big district, Portland Public mm. School District. And so they hire somebody, they, they pass a bill that's good for them. Mm -hmm. That bill is good for them, but bad for the state mm. of Oregon. 1538, I'm, I'm going to get 15, too far. What yeah. does that mean? What, what is it? So 1538 was a bill that said that if you were going to open a charter school, you needed to adopt the school district goals, which is co totally contradictory. You don't want that going. No, it's a totally <laughs> no, contradictory geez. to how why we're even here, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it also, like, um, 
you know, like Don was saying, it would have capped the amount of children attending a charter school or bricks and mortar. It was uh, three buildings or 3%. Well, the law currently says that a district could have 10% attending in a school district. So then, of course, it would have, de you know, decreased it dramatically. But Portland Public Schools should not be writing the law for the state of Oregon. We have over 15 K through 12 charter schools in the state of Oregon, and they were rural schools that were closing. So the rural school, like in Elkton, like in Paisley, like in Halfway, there's, you know, there's so many of these rural schools that were closing, and the community got together and said, we can't have our kids bust two hours away because they live out in the middle of nowhere. So they take this building and they flip it and they turn it into a charter school. With a bill like Portland was trying to pass, it would have done horrendous amount of damage to these schools because not 3%, it's 100% yeah, are yeah, attending yeah, in that yeah, school yeah. district. So when they come up for renewal, God knows what would have happened mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it, then there would have been this law that said, you know, you can only have 3%. So then what would you have done? A lottery for the K-12 mm -hmm. kids attending? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And, and so, yeah. I thought, you know what, I thought that was, excuse me, but I thought that was the Columbia River crossing uh, legislation that the governor was looking at. Was that the right, <laughs> was that the right bill? You, you, did you cite the right bill? No. No, that was a nine on that one. I'm that, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry yeah, about yeah, that. Now yeah, I understand. Yeah. But that, that to yeah. me should have been a priority. I mean, yeah. he is the new superintendent. He yeah. should have signed off one way as far as the concern. Yeah. Did he or did he? Did, did he well, I'm sure he was. I'm He's sure the he lobbyist was, for the kids. Really? I'm sure he was in favor of 1538. He was in favor of the 1538. Yeah, he's not in favor of uh, charter schools. Right. And why, I don't know. Yeah. He cannot fix education. I couldn't fix education. You made me in charge and said, okay, fix all the schools in Oregon. You can't do that. Schools are fixed just like any business any restaurant, any service industry, they're fixed by the details on the ground, day to day. And you can't make it better from Salem. And the, the governor can't. He needs to give people freedom to do things the right way, to do things the way parents like, to try alternatives, try some different things. Let some people have voc ed and see if maybe those yeah. kids would stay in school, you know. Gosh, you might try something, mm -hmm. you know. If, mm -hmm. if if a quarter of your customers are getting up and walking out of the store, you know, halfway through shopping, that's what high school kids are doing. A free education, they're getting up and walking away from it because yeah. it's useless to them. If that's happening, you, you, it's time to consider some alternatives. It's right. time to let some new ideas come in, right? It, maybe somebody yeah. could keep the kids in school. You know, mm -hmm. that would be a good start. You know, mm -hmm. let them do things th their way, right? Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. Talk to me. Well, okay, so one of the things that I was really interested in through the ESDs a long time ago was... ESD. Yeah, the Northwest ESDs, the regional... Which is the ESD, Educational the, Service yeah, District. Yeah, so they're kind of, they do these subcontracting things for um, school districts. So if you have a blind student, you can go to the ESD and they'll have a specialist. Is that a charter? Um, no, <laughs> yeah, but it could be. <laughs> I'm a yeah. contractor, right? Yeah, yeah. so I mean, you can go to you, the SD. Or, or, do, and how much money do they get? I don't know well, how much money they get, but they get a lot. They get points, and they do this little training thing. They get the whole or like the out. outdoor school programs come through the ESDs. That's and, a charter. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a charter. They get 12000 Do they? To well, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what I so what I decided was is I was going to find out how many charter schools in the state of Oregon are building houses with kids. Mm. So we have five charter schools in the state of Oregon that take kids and teach them all the trades. And they go build houses, and they're using Future Farmers of America. They're using the local rotaries. They're, they're, and I read this at the state level. This is what we need to do. We need to start partnering with our social industries that are already out there doing yes. it. We mm. need to and ask. Businesses. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we need to utilize what's yeah. there yeah. instead of saying, well, we're the only people who can do a good job. We need to be looking at other people who are specializing things and then bring them in and, and change it up a little bit. Wow. But charter schools are building houses in the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. and they're creating homes for people, and they're doing it on less money yeah. because they're masters of yes. partnering. And they want mm -hmm. to do it. And they yeah, want to do it. And they want, they want to, to teach it. Something kids. to do. Something. Mm -hmm. yeah. That way they can learn that read, writing, and arithmetic, right? Exactly. Because otherwise, if you can't, if you can't uh, measure and right. uh, uh, study instructions, right, things of that right. nature, you can't yeah. do anything. Yeah, kids, uh, some kids need examples of exactly. why to learn this. Why exactly. do I need to learn this? Exactly. And we're not doing that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look, we're going to take a short break on this note. Okay. And okay. we'll be right back. Okay, folks. We'll be right back, folks.
You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. All right, folks, welcome back. As you can see, my tie here, we're talking about kids. We're talking about their education. We're talking about their futures. We're talking about our future. From the standpoint, people like myself, we're looking towards retirement, you know, and this, that, and the other. Guess what? I may not be able to because kids are not working. <laughs> and guess what? The pot is small, you know. The bottom line is that, look, we got some very serious problems in this area. That's why we're doing this particular show in regards to alternatives to, to public education. It, 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 this is a, for instance, charter schools are just choices, if you will, for that matter. People are just concerned about their kids being able to survive, and you know, in their quote, in their senior ages. Matter of fact, across the board, we're concerned. We're concerned parents. We don't know where to go. So the ones who are well-to-do or well-educated, guess what? They can pick it up. But the ones, but 80 or 95 percent of our population don't have those choices. And so consequently, their kids are either uh, dependent uh, on the criminal justice system, and then as you know, you do the crime, you do the time, and guess what? You get out, and you're still doing the crime. Mm-hmm. And, and naturally, parents, a mother is a mother is a mother. They're going to be concerned about their kids and whatever. And in some cases, many of the mothers today have fallen in the crack. They were, they were part, part of that problem, too. And so guess what? We got, we got problems. So we need those extra choices, if you will, to identify with those young people, in m- most cases, that their parents can't really i.e. educate them or give them a chance. We need that chance for those kids. So anyway, my guests today, both Don, Don and Debbie, we're talking about this. These, these people are outside of Oregon. They're not just right here in, in, in metropolitan North Portland, in, in Portland for that matter, which, by the way, I, it seems as though after I'm, I'm hearing this conversation, the leading lobbyist, if you will, for the kids on the opposite way is the administration of the Portland Public Schools. And that's really where the problem is. While they're fighting with the teachers, well, they're fighting with the teachers aspect. The kids are not being educated. While they're fighting with the teachers, the administration said, you don't need voc ed over here in this deal. While they're fighting with the teachers, people are coming to the table with choices and say, hey, what about this and what about this and whatever? Okay, fine. We'll let you come in, by the way. But by the way, I might be getting 12000 I need six of those back in my pot so I can hire more administrators. So consequently, the kids are, we're, we're falling short, folks. So bottom line, we got a problem. So that's why we're having this discussion. Get to your parents. Call your legislator. You've got folks who are elected to office. You heard these folks here sitting up here today. Who's representing the kids? Who's representing people, your kids here in Multnomah County? You've got the Lou Fredericks, if you will. You've got, you've got Tina Kotek in this area. You've got all kinds of folks running around who are in the legislature. Why aren't they set, focusing on this particular issue? If you're going to have a special session, let's have a special session on the kids, not the money that we're talking about, hey, the lack of money for schools. No, the bottom line, the kids are not getting educated. What are you getting for your bucks? What are you getting for your money, folks? Let's get down to business. Don, Debbie, let's talk about this piece again. Okay. That's the problem. Really, I, I really think yeah. that's, that's it. <laughs> They're and fighting. Here's the funny thing is it, charter schools offer to do it for for less. Mm-hmm. And so we, we have a huge problem, which is that we have a budget problem. But let's not have, mm-hmm. let's don't use the people who want to do it for less money. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, we don't want any more of that. We have to right. do it the most expensive way. Right. It's, it, it's like... Yeah. It, you, we could solve all the bro- budget problems if we had everybody at charter school levels. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, we'd have plenty of money in this. Well, you know, you do make the point. And we, let's throw this piece out on the table because, you know, we have to have discussion. Tra- tra- traditionally, all teachers belong to the union in the public education section. 
They don't so have they've any got choice. a union. They got a union. Yeah. They, 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 you say they don't have a choice? They don't, they don't have, have any choice. choice. But we are talking about choices. Well, a charter, school, a charter school is it's different. Do, yes. do the yeah. unions have choices? I mean, do, they have choices, right? Do they have charters? In, do they have in charter schools? Dist- in, yeah, in, in <laughs> charter schools, teachers can choose to organize yes. if they if they wish. Yes. Okay. That's, that's completely within the law. But in the district schools, teachers have no choice but to pay the dues to yes. the teachers union and the teachers so they're union. fighting for their jobs that's another issue with yep. them right they're that's, fighting for their jobs the so only way mm-hmm. to have your job is to pay the union okay yeah. you can't. so what about the, the administration is running this whole piece so it's not the teachers running the piece i mean they just went through yeah. the strike thing possibility mm-hmm. of a strike here in the portland public schools and they were fighting big time well so how do they feel about this piece so i want to give you an example of corbett school district good so good corbett one. school district um <laughs> It, it, it's nationally recognized. I mean, Bob Dutton, who pulled that together over there, was a previous superintendent. I mean, he's, he's a very, very smart man. He knows the district um, very well. And so it was a failing district. And he flips it and he puts a charter school in the district. It becomes nationally recognized. So the, so what happens is the school board gives him his renewal because every charter school has a timeline. Right. That then they have to go back up for a renewal. So they get the renewal, but then they take his building. <laughs> so Corbett is a small school district. It's not like there's a lot of places you can go. So they take his building. So talking about administration or the powers of bees. So here's 460 children, which is a large amount of children, who now will no longer have a school wait, 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 wait. to take go to. Take the building. What do you mean? Now, well, now so they, they were housing what building? Yeah, so they were leasing from the school district their building. Okay, right. So they gave them the renewal of their charter, but then they say, but you can't have the building anymore. So it's kind of dirty pool. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like, well, we like what you're doing, but we're going to take your facility. So it's so it's just weird. It's not okay that they can do that because we have to focus on the kids. Where are these kids in corporate going to go to school? Yeah, where are they going to go? They're going to have to be bussed out because mostly what happens is most people who choose a charter school, especially one that has an outstanding reputation right, like people that, are becoming. Mm-hmm. they're going to go, they're not going to go to the average traditional public school anymore. They're going to look for another charter school mm-hmm. option is what they're going to do. And then they're going to drive. Well, it seems silly because Corbett had all that money. Mm-hmm. It had prestige. It was getting, you know, good recognition. So we find in charter schools all kinds of interesting scenarios like that happening for no good reason. Mm-hmm. So it's not really about the money is the point. Mm-hmm. It's political. It's yeah, political. yeah, because we're offering political. them money. We get 40%. That other 60% doesn't just vaporize. It goes into the district pocket mm-hmm. for buses, for free and reduced, for special education, for administration. For administration. So it's, it's very much top-heavy that way. So they get rid of charter schools. Not because of money, because mm. they're making money on us. They get rid of us because of competition and all kinds of other reasons. So what's the latest update on this particular school up in Corbett? I mean, as far, so as, they're a, fighting, as a teacher. They're fighting for their life. They're looking for another place to locate. There's, and I, I, I'm not even sure what they're going to do. I mean, right now it's Is not, Governor Kitzhopper aware of this issue? They, the parents formulated a, a beautifully written letter, and they sent it to everybody at the state level. And so everybody's gotten the letter. I saw the list. It's long where they send it. And then parents would add their own little, you know, or grandparents, mm-hmm. they'd add their own story to it. And so right now, I mean, it is what it is. And, and that's not, it is, that's just so un-American, you it's know. It's the top performing high school in the, in the state. Yeah, it's like number five in the nation. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. 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 And, well, and comparable to SEI. You see, I fall sort of like in that yeah. same it, category. It, yes. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. Here locally. Mm-hmm. And we find that inner city and rural have very, very similar issues. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have the high pregnancy, you have the dropout, you have the drugs, you have the whole, you know. I mean, I saw a gang down south and all the kids were wearing Carter jeans. I'm like, you guys are, I'm like, you guys are, and they had flip hair and I'm like, you guys are mm-hmm. a gang. And they're like, yeah, we're a gang. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, right. you look like farm boys to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nope, they were an official gang. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they did official gang things. They promised me, and I'm like, oh, boy. Mm-hmm. So it's same, same. It's very similar, you know. You know, some, some of them out there, would, would pay, some, some folks would say something about, what about the failure rate of charter schools, if you will? Any ideas of the, 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 the percentage of failure rates? But one, the, one of the things that. That, that when you give people freedom to do things the right way, you mm-hmm. also give them freedom to mess up. And... Um, the the good news is they don't stay forever. You know, schools that are bad, 
in the district system go on forever and ever and ever, you know. And in, in, in if nobody wants to attend, they force everybody to attend mm -hmm. so that they have clients. But charter schools, if they're not doing a good job, parents start pulling their kids out uh, and their charter can be shut down. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, there are charters that don't, don't do well, just like mm -hmm. businesses start up and yeah. fail, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but you can't have innovation if you're not going to have uh, give people the freedom to Take try some things. Risks, yeah. Take some risks, and yeah. some stuff doesn't pay off. Uh, kids survive mm -hmm. fine, mm -hmm. you know. They move on to another charter school, or that you know the parent moves them out. Mm -hmm. We sat and talked with somebody the other day who whose you know child went to this one charter school and. Gosh, they felt like they weren't learning anything, and they pulled them out and put them in a different charter school, mm -hmm. and sure enough, now they learned how to read. And it's, you know, they were saying, well, that just shows the charter schools aren't good. Said, no, that shows the charter schools are good. Or that because, particular focus didn't work for yeah. your child. And then who's, and, you know, and who's and they got to move. the charter? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they got to move. The parents mm -hmm. are the ones who super, parents can tell if their kids aren't right, learning. Right, right, and right. they yeah. can move them out. They can tell if their kids are getting into gangs and trouble, and they move them somewhere where they mm -hmm. don't, you know? And so if we, so we have about 124 charter schools. And so we know it was an average of 10 charter schools a year that were opening. We're only projecting maybe three opening next year because there's no more federal funding to help charter schools open. So the charter schools that are opening now, there was like a Russian immersion that was trying to open. Mm -hmm. Cannon Beach actually yeah. has been trying to open for three years. What and kind of a charter is it? What kind of, just a regular it's a, school? Yeah, it's a core, they're doing a core knowledge curriculum. They're doing direct instruction. Everything is a proven model that they're doing. It's an abandoned situation where the district has closed a building down. Kids are now being bused out an hour going both ways, seaside and then down mm -hmm. south. So kindergartners are on the bus like two hours a day. It's ridiculous. Gee, right. And there's just no good reason for them not to allow this community to get their charter school going. It doesn't hurt them. It only brings in revenue. It brings the community together. Mm -hmm. So um, cho choices are critical for parents. And we, we know that we saw people at Mitch, and I know you did it, mm -hmm. Arthur, people would move into the area to go to our charter school just to get a chance, just, just to get a chance. For the kid. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was only about the yeah, kid. It's about their children. But if we all felt like that, if mm -hmm. we all would make those sacrifices, then what happens is the standard goes up, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. people don't leave a perfectly good school. Mm -hmm. they, you know, so the standard will raise if we're all being held to the same bar, but charter schools are actually held to a higher bar. Then, therefore, they can be closed. Mm -hmm. Then, therefore, because they're under a, a micro you know, a microscopic, you know, from the, the district, the state, the federal government, the parents, every single entity you can think of is looking at the charter school. But if we all did that to every single school, the bar would go up, mm -hmm. right? We would mm -hmm. all be held to a higher standard. But instead, we just go, well, never mind that public school over there. Well, you know, this really concerns me because, you know, when you think about it, we're having a special session now with the things on the board like the CRC uh, and all these other different items aspect of it. But the bottom line, what about our futures? We should be having you know. a special session about this issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, here in the local area, for instance, in the multiple area, kids are kids who, quote, are, are uneducated, that nothing to do, whatever. They're called gang members. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, what, 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 what enthusiasm does it give a family or right. even a child if they're being called gang members? Right. A kid's a kid's a kid. Right. Okay? And kids don't join gangs until they're unsuccessful that's in right, school. That's right. They're that's, looking. That's what yeah. happens first right. is their the school yep. fails them, fails yeah. to teach them, tells them they aren't smart, exactly. tells and then then they start looking somewhere right. else. Exactly. And they, exactly. So the KIPP charter schools are a fantastic model of charter schools back east and they only use well, what is a KIPP? What, what, it's what, a, what it's do you do? hundred percent it's hundred percent poverty will go to a KIPP charter school. They have an amazing system of how they educate their administrators and then, then where they actually strategically will place a charter school is in the highest poverty area in okay. the state. And they, they, I loved it when he said, he goes, a bad neighborhood does not produce a bad school. A bad school produces a bad neighborhood wow. because mm -hmm. kids drop out and where do they do? They hang out. Mm -hmm. They hang out and they go. And Nothing to do. That's mm -hmm. right. Nothing exactly. Do. A good school produces a good community. 
And you, so you can't say, oh, my school is located in a bad neighborhood. I know for a fact that there are charter schools in this nation and in Oregon that choose the worst neighborhood possible because, by God, those are the kids they want. Mm -hmm. Because those kids deserve the same education as everybody else. And charter schools are very, very similar to a private school atmosphere. And those teachers do pay attention and they work for less. Mm -hmm. And those kids will work when they go to a charter school because it's smaller. People are going to pay attention to you. You know, the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. yes. And charter schools pay attention to those details because they're held to that higher bar. You know, you make a, a, I was going back to this point about the, uh, the, the kids uh, actually building houses and things mm -hmm. of that nature around the state. Mm -hmm. In this particular area, we've got older homes and this and We've got a lot of senior citizens, for instance. Mm -hmm. They need a little rehab, if you will, in their houses and whatever. Yeah. And imagine all those trades, plumbing, yeah. electrical, you know, carpentry, yeah. roofing, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. These kids could get involved, i.e. a charter, for mm -hmm. that matter. Awesome. And unions, in many cases, the trades, yeah. mm -hmm. are always having major concerns about the fact that they're losing their, i.e. to senior citizens. They, mm -hmm. they don't have any folks coming back into the mm -hmm. trades aspect right. of it. What a beautiful opportunity, if you will, right. to actually sure. put that piece together, i.e. charter. We don't right. have anything here in this That's area, right. but we they, have they, a need. They have to have the, you have to have the flexibility to be able to yeah. do that. You can't right. just do that right. in the middle of Portland Public because there's so many rules, regulations, everything's all set up. It's rigid, and so you can't do the things that can make a difference. And, uh, you know, and this, the sad thing is, is that there mm -hmm. are charter school operators like KIPP around the country who know how to do things mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. um, in, in California, there's, there's mm -hmm. some down there, the Indian charter schools. Mm -hmm. um, and, but they won't set up here in Oregon Sorry. because the, the atmosphere is so hostile right. to charter schools. It's so difficult to mm -hmm. get approval to open charter schools mm -hmm. that, uh, that we're losing out. The rest of the country is moving ahead and we're mm -hmm. sitting here saying, nope, you know, we're only going to have uh, these uh, traditional yes. uh, district run schools mm -hmm. and we don't care how f how many kids drop out, we don't care how low our scores go, we're not going to change anything, we're not going to let anybody innovate, we're not going to and you know we need to change that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what's going to happen, when you start thinking, you always follow the money, first you follow the money mm -hmm. and follow the person who's basically signing this stuff into effect after you mm -hmm. and find out where are their kids going to school. Yeah, right. <laughs> where yeah. are they going to school? Yeah, I can tell you. Well, you know, we do have school choice in, in, in Oregon. Uh, and it happens when you can afford to move into the better neighborhoods. You know, mm -hmm. if you got so, money. Yeah, if you got enough money to move into the better neighborhoods, son of a gun, you have these great schools and things work well. You know, you you just have to be able to afford house payments there. Mm -hmm. you know? I was. We had a school in Arthur Academy in David Douglas. You know, and um, lots of minorities, lots of non-English speaking kids. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, you drive 10 minutes over into Happy Valley, right. and there's these big, huge, beautiful schools, you know, and um, that, but you have to pay, you know, $400,000 for a house up yeah. there, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's how you get the schools you want. But, okay, mm -hmm. I have to say this. Yeah. So I think some of the best schools don't look good on the outside. Yeah, that's true. They look good on You're the right. inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we know a homeschool mom can win that spelling bee, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so you don't have to have a big, beautiful building, but it's what goes on on the inside of the walls. Mm -hmm. Charter schools are taught in the basement of churches. They're taught in shopping malls. And I mean, a teacher is a, a good teacher is a teacher who can teach, yeah. right? Yeah. And so um, it's not about the it, building. Those, right. those big, beautiful schools still get really bad sometimes, test scores, sometimes, right? Sometimes, yeah. 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 And so it's it's about what goes in it. It's the heart that goes in it. And there's nobody that opens a charter school that's not sold out with passion and vigor and who wants to make a difference into every child's life that comes through that door. And that's different than just getting a job. Because it's, and you know mm -hmm. as well as I know, it's not a job. It is a life when you mm -hmm. open a charter school. It becomes yes. your life. Yeah, and, and you live it, you breathe it, and you love it. Mm -hmm. Because you get... I would get emails from kids who would come in as, as kindergartners and then their parents would move back east. And they'd go, oh, Mrs. Lawrence, I'm so glad you're still there. I want you to know mm -hmm. that you changed my life. I was always told I couldn't read. Mm -hmm. 
and I left your school being able to read. Mm -hmm. And now I love to read. Mm -hmm. I mean, those little tiny things like that that just keep you going forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so let, let's, we got about ten more minutes here, and let's talk about um, uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about where do we, where do we go from here mm -hmm. from the standpoint. We got any you got in, in, in individuals out there that are saying, "Hey, you're going to take my job. You're going to do this, or you're going to do mm -hmm. this, or you're going to do that, and whatever." Mm -hmm. You got the lobbyists. You got again. Mm -hmm. You got you got the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? Well, one thing is we need to be paying attention to other states. Even Washington does a stellar job with their education, and then they just are starting charter schools. Mm -hmm. We need to start looking at the states that are rated the top, and we need to start looking at who's doing what. Okay. And stop looking at Oregon, but really put our eyes out on the nation and seeing what they're doing, because there are some seriously quality schools going on outside of Oregon. And then you need to adopt that model and bring it in mm -hmm. and stop you know stop buying new curriculum and yeah. i mean math is math mm -hmm. right and stop trying to change what teachers are doing and instead look at what people are doing outside for less mm -hmm. and bring that model in instead of well you need new this you need new computers you need new desks mm -hmm. you need new no look yeah, yeah. at what people are doing for less and doing a better job, a better job. Yeah. Okay, Don, what do you say? If I was the governor, I would say we are open for charter schools. We want more charter schools. If um, the state has the ability to accept charter schools, uh, the universities have the ability to start charter there schools, and I would encourage uh, all of the above. And I would, you know, write to these people that are doing amazing charter schools around the country and say, come or open one in Portland. Right. And, um, and, you know, if the districts don't want it, then let the state sponsor it. But, you know, mm -hmm. put, some, put some schools up in North, you know, North Portland, some, some KIPP academies and some things like that. Right. And let's just see what happens with those kids and That's see, right. and give them some chances and some choices. It doesn't cost money, doesn't need, don't need legislation, just need to, to say, yeah. all right, it's time to have innovation and to stop. Mm -hmm just being afraid of the teachers union mm -hmm. the teachers union can adjust they will get used to charter schools they're mm -hmm. they, they did it in part baltimore mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. um, actually teachers unions in the charter schools in mm -hmm. baltimore so mm -hmm. it's perfectly possible to do this That's right. um, but you have to say we care more about the kids than the yeah. existing system. We've got to mm -hmm. have some innovation. Well, you know, in all due respect, my next show, I'm going to have uh, Steve Buell on. Mm -hmm. Steve happens to be a uh, board member for Portland Public Schools. Uh, he's an activist in his own mind, but he's got quite an experience and quite background, very sensitive to the whole issue of, mm -hmm. of poor kids and just kids who just barely make it and whatever. And he's, he's a fighter along that line. And so I'm going to hopefully he's going to respond to some of the things that were said in, in, in this particular program aspect of it. But the other point I would make is that, um, uh, would you, let's say, for instance, would you be opposed, if you will, to, if the government were to put together a special session just on education in Oregon, educating our kids? What about a special session? He happens to be the superintendent of schools anyway. Right. Where basically you all would be actually part of, part of that discussion, if you will, and just kind of get a, cause it. Because it, it is about the kids. It is about right. the kids. Because mm -hmm. he has a board there. He's got mm -hmm. a board, if mm -hmm. you will, of mm -hmm. advisors. I think the chairperson of that board happens to have been a former superintendent, mm -hmm. is my understanding. And then mm -hmm. you, you read these listings of these folks. They're basically coming from the same background. Right. But what I'm hearing is that no one's responding to the kids. Right. It's, it's still political. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. I think there absolutely needs to be a voice. I think that I think maybe even people need to, like you said, not be afraid of the union, mm -hmm. but actually know that they're being heard mm -hmm. and then seeing some action from it. I mean, we really should be listening to people who are in the ditches and then bring in people. We should bring in the KIPs, the Green Dots, mm -hmm. the Team CFAs. We should bring in these people who are doing an amazing job with mm -hmm. kids and listen to them. Mm -hmm. Listen to what's going on. The National Charter School uh, Alliance, you know, and Public mm -hmm. Charter School Alliances, they have data that is amazing mm -hmm. and that our governors should be paying attention to. Um, because it doesn't cost, like, he's, like Don said, it doesn't cost any more to do mm -hmm. this, but what it does do is maybe show us that we could be doing it better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what about uh, as far as the legislators in your di respective district? Are you in communication with them? Have you tried to talk with them at all? Those elected officials about the concerns that you've had. And I'll ask Don that question too. Have you um, talked to any legislator? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of made my rounds over this last 1538 bill and was 
you know, and you know what? They're kind, loving people who really want to help. And they're not making the big bucks. I mean, they really are there to help, but they need to hear from us. You know, because if they don't hear from us, they're just hearing from the lobbyist, mm -hmm. right? They're only hearing from the people who are taking the time to go there. And so I just encourage people to take the time and go there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they want your vote and they're kind people. I mean, they gave up a lot to be there. And so I, I just, you know, I think friendships and relationships and trust take time. And that we should all be helping them, and they'll help us. Well, you know, I think about when I think about that, I think about Jeff Crop, and I, when he was a representative in the state of Oregon, that, that matter, he had a good ear. He understood yeah. what was going on and whatever. Maybe he needs to run again. Yeah, <laughs> he's always running. He's already out there. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, but that's, that's another problem. The folks who are going to represent it really need to know what this issue is. Don, you have yes. any input yeah. on that? Well, I think uh, you know we are. It's the David and Goliath thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we we don't have oodles and oodles of money to pay people to to walk the halls of the legislature yeah. and I think the other thing is that administration of school districts is who talks to the legislators and so they talk to the the head of the, the superintendent of their local district and he says well we don't want any more charter schools please try to stop charter schools because uh, it takes money away from us and um, and so they go oh yeah okay let's vote against charter schools that's who they hear from um, not right. from the parents who said, thank God, you know, you saved my kid's life right. by having an alternative to the school. And, you know, they care, but they're not, they're not lobbyists. They can't go down to the legislature. And they got their kid taken care of. So it's the ones who don't have a choice that, right. you know, are being disenfranchised. Yeah. You know, and then another point, too, again, like I said, you know, we have, we've had parents who have fallen in the cracks because of the same problem. Mm -hmm. In many cases, that's what we're trying to address. Yeah, you're trying to address right. that kids. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, the folks who are making decisions that they don't understand that. Yeah. They, don't, they, they weren't part of that, that, er, that error, if you will. Yeah. That point. So we do have a problem. But I we want do. to thank both of you for being a part of this, pro, this yeah, show. And hopefully I'll get Jeff, Steve to respond to that piece and bring you back on. Maybe we have our own special session. Uh, All right. We'll, 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 call, we'll call our yes. own session, if you will, and, yeah. and do a kind of a conference type deal mm -hmm. right here in the, in the major studio. Okay. okay. And I'll get in touch with uh, Debbie. As you know, I will you mm -hmm. choose coordinator, her and Hannah. They're going to do a good job. I know they can put this thing together for me anyway. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, this, this has been thank great. Thank you so much. Oh, this has been just been great. And to keep up the good work. And I think uh, we've. Uh, I think some of the folks out there have heard what you were saying, and do call your legislator, call the governor. That's what it's all about. He is the new superintendent of schools. He is the one that's supposed to be responding to your kids and their welfare. You're the taxpayer. You're paying for. What are you getting for your monies? At the end of the day, you're retiring. Who's going to pick up your retirement check? You may not be even getting any purge anymore in the future. Purge may not be there because guess what? We don't. We don't have the kids. We got all the, all the criminal justice system and whatever. Anyway. Thank you for being with us, and hopefully you will, like I said, be responsible, be enthusiastic about making sure we, let's, let's keep the child going. Let's, let's think about this child. It's very, very important. Have a good one. Take care.